Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco. With additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here for day three, final wrap up. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman, wrapping up the three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the OpenStack Summit, live here in Vancouver, British Columbia. Beautiful scenery, looking at a cruise ship. Stu, great city. Um, would you move here? Uh, so, John, um, <laughs> I wish I could afford to move here, because I tell you, the food, the drink, and everything seems really uh, okay, but I'm wondering if I could find a place on Hawaii cheaper, because <laughs> I hear real estate is quite expensive here. It's like here. Palo Alto um, here. But maybe we can hop on that cruise ship, uh, you know, <laughs> when we're done here. Um, I, John, this has been, you know, we've been to so many places. I mean, first show we've done in Canada, um, but, you know, we've had so many great venues. I mean, when you look back, John, you know, you've been to Barcelona, you've done London, you know, Frankfurt, you know, yeah. Vegas, 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 uh, lots of places lot of around there. Uh, how's this locale size up for you? Uh, well, for me, it's, it's fun. I mean, OpenStack has always been, you know, I've been involved with Rackspace before OpenStack was even started. They tried to get something going with NASA, and we watched it emerge, and we brought the Cube finally to the one in Portland. Um, we drove up, we said this is too important. We saw that call, we made that call. Good call for us. Us. But we've watched OpenStack have these, I call nine lives. You know, there was moments where it was teetering on the edge of either collapse or chaos, civil war, whatever you want to call it, it and it survived. Through the perseverance of the community, it, per, it, it, it survived and had persevered around the core mission. To have an alternative to an Amazon for the enterprise, a great hope, a bridge to the future, and they've done that. They've done that, they've crossed over the chasm, in my opinion, to an environment where you got real build out, you got real architecture happening, real engineering up and down the stack from uh, hardware operations uh, to software engineering to solution architects. So, so it's really awesome. And again, the sign, the telltale signs do is the sessions are packed. People are on the floor with their laptops. It's not just a schmoozing, you know, rubbing and networking event, people talking to each other, high-fiving each other, you know, congratulating how great they are. This event has got a lot of meat on the bone and there's real engineering involved. You're hearing things like migration, portability, you know, federated identity, you know, certification. It's growing up fast. It's in adolescent stage. I think it's going to accelerate. You got investors here still making some good investments. And you got things like Kubernetes coming out of the woodwork. Kubernetes will be a big deal. We've talked to Patrick Riley and his company. Um, hot startup, that thing is going to be amazing. We had, uh, you know, looking at the container madness that's now proliferated. The, it's the, the, the table is set, there are tools. Lou Tucker from Cisco, legend, talking about his vision and his experience and how that shapes into, and how the balance of this community is scaling from the bottom up, and that's a real rarity, Stu, and I think you know, it's going to be a case study, I think, when you look at the success of this open source community, it balances the passion, the entrepreneurship, the developer first mindset, with the big guys coming in. And this is a new phenomenon. You're seeing no proprietary vendors out there, no lock-in, really interesting environment. Yeah, so, so, so John, you know, put on my analyst hat here, and f for the first few years of OpenStack, it's how many red flags can we knock down? Because there were challenges. How do we get stability? You know, what is in the integrated piece? Oh, now we got DEF Core, and now we've got, you know, powered by OpenStack. Uh, the foundation went through massive change over the last year. Uh, general feedback I hear in the hallways, the conversation is, you know, we've got a good direction going, a lot of people involved. I'm not not ready to say that we're green light. Uh, I, I think you know some of those lights where it's red, but you have the little thing that's showing you that it's going to turn green soon. I think we have a clear path to maturity, uh, and you know we we have been. We were just talking to Boris uh, from Morantis. He said there's a lot of customers doing this. We've given all the proof points that this can be done at scale. Um, you know it, th there is nothing architecturally that's going to stop us from doing it. Um, but uh, you know great interview we had with Mark Interante talking about you know some of the new stuff that came out in Kilo and the stuff that's going to come in Liberty to help push things forward. Uh, upgrades from one release to another is still something that needs to be, you know, filled out uh, to, to make this, you know, really a full solution, but absolutely, uh, I think it's well beyond the science project stage. Uh, it is the, you know, the, the poster child for, uh, you know, some of these open source projects to really move things forth, um, you know, 
really impressed as to where things gone. John, you know, you and I talked a lot two years ago when the Cube went to Portland, and it was like, do we go, and is it real? And people said when the Cube showed up in Portland, it was one of those proof points that this is real. And Atlanta, you know, we really took that step further, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I was thrilled to come here. I mean, Vancouver, beautiful place. You know, we've been looking out in the harbor all week here, and really good stuff happening. Um, and in some ways, uh, the, the line I've used a couple of times from uh, uh, Sean Kerner uh, is that it, it's a little bit boring. There's not as much drama. We're, we're going to real environments. There's lots of users here geeking out on the sessions, as you've said, John, sitting on the floor so that they can get more room. Um, containers have come a lot long in the last year. We've got a bunch of new projects uh, that, that are working in this space, and you're, you're going to see that maturation of the integration engine that is OpenStack. So integrations do you see as a big deal? Yeah, absolutely, John. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's as we've moved above products and we've moved up to a platform, and it's not, you know, uh, I think Boris was saying that OpenStack uh, can be one of the data center operating systems, but it's only a piece of the entire puzzle because, well, what about containers? Well, that's going to plug in. I take things like Docker Swarm. I take things like Kubernetes. I can plug that uh, into Magnum. And underneath, you know, I still need infrastructure. You know, this all the software needs to live somewhere. It, it needs on, on physical equipment uh, on uh, you know in a physical data center and there's lots of service provider action here at the show uh, and you know in the OpenStack space so you know absolutely it's not the full stack but it's the new software stack built on you know open APIs go go to get to get all the the, the content and uh, you know yeah this is the new modern you know software platform I got to ask you Stu about EMC you got the big whales coming in what's your take on EMC's moves here we've talked to some EMC folks here in the cube what's your take on EMC yeah so I mean John with my background I, I worked at EMC you know I I, I love to poke at EMC for what credibility they have in open source. Uh, I, I can tell you when, I knew in, in the interoperability lab, when I started there was one engineer there. Now, you look at the, the, the proof points they have, the code they're making, uh, I like that they're open sourcing projects. Um, it's great that they can you know, bring in a bunch of people here, because they've been involved in OpenStack for years, but you know, they're top level They're putting some wood behind the arrow. They, there is wood behind the arrow, and from the, you know, Randy was our first guest of the week, and what did he say? Joe Tucci said that two of the top things they're here, of the four things that they're hearing from users are you know, open source software and COTS hardware, and we're already seeing the COTS hardware in there, and the software's starting to change, so EMC's a big ship that's pivoting in this direction, and I would never count them out because they know how to move and change with the seas. Okay, Cisco, Red Hat, big relationship there, developing. What's your analysis of that? Yeah, so, so uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, you know, I, you know, Lou, as you said, it, it's just an honor to be able to talk to him and go in to what they're doing. Um, there are parts of Cisco that are fully all in on everything open source, and then there's plenty of parts of Cisco where that's not the way they do things. Um, you know, Cisco, I think, lead led standards for many years, and they solve customer problems, and then they worry about kind of standardizing and, and doing everything else. Uh, but absolutely, there's real commitment from. Cisco here, and the partnership with Red Hat is a great proof point. What better way uh, to you know say that you're heavily involved here than have the company that knows how to deliver on that environment? Uh, you know. Red Hat, uh, you know, interesting relationship with the OpenStack community. Uh, you know, last year it was one of our top uh, kind of trending stories was uh, as how kind of Red Hat was, you know, how they were going to manage their OpenStack distribution with, you know, what it could work with. Uh, you know, if you talk to Canonical, you talk to Mirantis, uh, they will shoot arrows at Red Hat, uh, but Red Hat has hundreds of customers using OpenStack, um, you know, and, and they are, you know, a force to be reckoned with in this space. So, you know, do, doing well, the, some of the giants. Stu, well, we're going to wrap up the show here. Again, OpenStack Summit, I guess our report is this. The vibe is great. The feeling in the community is up and to the right. It's got a great vibe. People, new people are coming in, new in-migration from real practitioners. It is on a road to maturity. It's far from mature yet, but the signs are beautiful. You're seeing some maturization. You're seeing some great production deployments, not just POCs anymore. And you're starting to see some simplicity. You're starting to see some execution at very large scale, speed service providers to the enterprise, a lot of great action. Again, robust community. So I'm super excited to continue the conversation. Look for our crowd chats, go to wikibon.com for the research, and obviously siliconangle.com for the blog. So uh, we're going to continue to be covering. Stu, great, to, great guest, great job this week. Uh, you know, getting in all the, all the conversations, hitting the hallways, hitting the events, getting the data, and sharing it with, with, with the guests here on theCUBE and also the audience. Shout out to the boys here, uh, Andrew, 
Patrick, Greg, great job. All the folks back at the ranch, SiliconANGLE. This is theCUBE, psyched to be here and looking forward to continuing the conversation on our sites. Stay tuned for our next opportunity. Looking for HP Discovers next. We're going to take a week off, regroup, and then full swing through the summer and into the fall. So this is theCUBE, breaking live here in Vancouver, British Columbia, from the Tech Summit. Thanks for watching and see you next time.